Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I'm sitting here next to a Creality CR10 SE, and we are going to test a mask print on this machine. I'm going to slice it using Creality Slicer, upload it to Creality Cloud, and print from Creality Cloud. I will walk you through every step of the process right now. So here we are in Creality Print. We are going to go ahead and set up the CR10 SE printer profile. We are going to look at the top right corner for this section labeled printer. Clicking on the drop down menu, you will choose add. In here, you will see a list of available printers and we are going to click on the CR series and look for the CR10 SE. You can find it here in this list or you can scroll here and look for it currently at the time of this video. It's all the way at the bottom. We will go ahead and choose add. It will then ask you which nozzle you have installed on the CR10 SE, offering you a total option of 0.4 or 0.4. I'm going to go ahead and choose 0.4. You will now see at the top right corner under printer, it says CR10 SE 0.4 nozzle. Under material, you will see extruder and you will choose the filament you are working with. They have a generic PLA option and a hyper PLA option. I am a huge fan of hyper PLA, so I will select that. Do feel free to select generic PLA and work with whatever PLA you have. I also am inclined to believe both of these options will work with hyper. So for this print, I have hyper PLA selected. We will use the 0.2 profile. I use the 0.2 profile on all my printers. Unless you've seen a need to work with a smaller layer height, I do recommend working with 0.2. I am going to print a Casey Jones mask by holding down my left mouse button in a folder on a secondary screen and simply dragging it into the bed of Creality Print. You will see the model has been imported and is sitting here on my print bed. It's quite big. We are going to go ahead and reduce the size of this. This is my first attempt at a mask on this printer, so I'm going to go ahead and make it smaller. If you need to adjust the size of the test model you are using, Simply click on the model to highlight it. You'll see it is now blue and then click scale or press the S key on your keyboard because uniform is checked. Any size that I change will proportionately affect the rest. So I'm going to knock this down to 50% scale and it will uniformly proportionally adjust the other two to 50% as well. Now we have a much more reasonably sized model to work with for our test. I want the printer to print this by building layers on top of itself. The way it's orientated right now will require tons of supports. So I will click on this model. I will click on bottom with bottom selected. You will see all possible orientation surfaces. I would like to stand this model up. So I will choose this surface right here. You will see as I hover my mouse over potential surfaces, they turn yellow. Simply left click and you'll see the model is now resting on that surface. Click away from the model to turn that mode off and have a look at the model. It is now sitting nicely on the flat upper surface of this model. This is why good, strong model design is valuable. This mask was created with this beautiful flat top layer, allowing me to rest it flat on the bed across its entire surface, making it possible to print this mask standing up where every layer is on top of itself, reducing the need for supports. However, there is limited bed contact, so I do want to add a brim and I may want to add supports just to help stabilize the model and hold it in place to, to be sure all the aggressive movement from the print bed doesn't cause me to lose my bed adhesion from this model. The first thing I want to do is face this model towards the front of the printer. Looking at the print bed, you will see these arrows right here represent the front left corner. So I will click on the model. I will click on rotate or press the R key and you will look for these arrows which control various rotation planes. The purple one is going to give me what I want so I can rotate it this way. However, you will notice over here in the upper left corner, you can simply click minus 45 degrees until we have a full 180 degree turn. And now the model is facing us. Let's go ahead and make some more slicing decisions. Click here on the edit button to bring up all your options. We're going to go to shell. Two walls is good for this. If you'd like it to be stronger, you may choose three. 
However, that will increase your print time considerably. So we'll go back to two. Z seam alignment, I like to choose where it goes. User specified, we will try back left. Confirming that the Z seam is where we want it will be our last task. Going back to infill, 15% is pretty high. I think eight to 10% is good for this. We're gonna go 8%. Speed. You will see Creality is fairly aggressive with its default profiles. However, it does advertise speeds up to 600, but this is a tall, thin model with limited bed contact. This is not a time for ego. This is a time for control, success, and quality to prevail. So I'm going to slow this down even further to 250. One of the nice things about Creality Print is you will see it proportionately adjusted the rest of the speeds. Moving down to support, we are going to choose support. And I do want to use tree supports. We will use tree strong. Tree slim is usually fine, especially if it's a low weight model supporting areas that are low weight. But for this model, we want the tree supports to be stronger so they hold the model firmly in place in order for it to survive all the moving and vibrating of the bed. So we'll choose tree strong. We will choose Touching build plate only and support overhang of 60 is usually a good place to start. I'm going to add 3% density. I do not want hollow tree supports. I want the tree support trunks to have some strength. Let's go ahead and save this and have a look to see what the model looks like. Before hitting the slice button, do save yourself any potential issues by saving your project. Now we can go ahead and slice it without worrying about a crash costing us our work. And here we are. One of the features lacking in Creality Print is support blockers and support painting. You will see that it did add support for a tiny little bridge right here. I do not need supports there. You will see it wrapped around the front of the entire model, and that is totally not necessary. We can go ahead and try to make that one go away by increasing our support angle just a little bit to 65. Let's press save and slice that again. There you have it. I'm quite happy to see it has removed that unnecessary support tree wrapping around the entire face of the model. This here is a strong tree support. You can see how fat it is and it's going to have a few percentage of infill. That infill will help provide a little bit of strength and stability to this tree support so it won't fall apart and cause the support tree to fail. Had we chose slim supports, you will see how much thinner and rounder the tree supports are. And this might not provide enough strength to hold this thing in place as the print gets taller and taller and starts shaking that bed forward and back due to it being a bed slinger. Of course, it also made some really bizarre support choices here which we'd have to work on. This is why Creality Print needs support painting and support blockers badly. Because this is practically a 90 degree angle, almost no support angle threshold is going to make these supports go away. However, that may allow us an opportunity to get rid of this support by increasing that threshold. This is a very small bridge. So let's go ahead and increase the support angle limit to see if we can convince the slicer to take that support away. I'm going to go up a little bit to 67%. There you go. 67% got rid of that unnecessary support, leaving all of the eye supports, or at least the majority of the eye supports intact. I'm confident this thing can handle bridging of 67%. So we are going to leave it at this, and we have ourselves a very nice looking print job here. However, you will see moving up the angle even a little bit has reduced the size of our tree support to this tiny little trunk. However, I'm pretty confident the machine can print this section without much issue. Once it reaches the eyes, these supports will help print this bridging, but will also grab a hold of the model to help it print the rest of this model without the bed slinger causing the model to shimmy and shake and maybe even separate from the bed and fail. So we'll go ahead and give this a try. Should it fail, we'll have to switch to the larger tree supports. The final thing we want to check is where the Z-seam is. The majority of the Z-seam is down the rear edge of this model. You can see it indicated by that white line. 
I am okay with that. We're going to leave that be. Taking a look at our printing temperature, the default is 220. The bed default is 60. I am happy with that as well. We will click into bed adhesion and I'm going to go ahead and add a brim. Not only will this brim help ensure that my supports have good bed adhesion, it will also help ensure that my nozzle is well primed and printing cleanly by the time it actually starts printing the mask itself. Let's go ahead and send this model to Creality Cloud. Casey Jones, 50% size, CR10. SE Creality Print Confirm Here I am in my Creality Cloud account I am in my workbench I will click on my FDM printers and look for Anna Lee You will see Anna Lee requires a firmware update I will skip that for now It's showing online and I will click into it I'm going to print a file to Anna Lee by clicking Choose File, My Uploads, and it's showing only one file so far matching the CR10 SE, that is the Casey Jones mask I just uploaded. Creality Cloud is very smart and it can detect which printer the G code belongs to. To print this file, we'll simply click on it and click on Prints. It'll ask if you want to run the calibration first. You can probably say no. I'm going to go ahead and say enable to be safe. This will run the auto bed leveling, Z offset, etc. to make sure everything with my bed is okay. Press confirm. And the file is sent to the CR10 SE printer through the internet from Creality Cloud to the Nebula pad where we can begin monitoring the print. If you had a Nebula camera, you would see that live feed right here and a time lapse would be created. Once things are heated, the calibrations are run and the print starts, you will see your temperatures and other progress here under print settings where you will be able to make changes to them using the Creality Cloud app or creatycloud.com. Here we are in Creality Cloud. You can see the nozzle temp is 220, the hotbed is 60. I am on layer 154 of 495. It's telling me how much filament was used, how much filament is needed, how long it's been printing, and how much time is left. Creality Cloud is super cool. If you haven't started using it yet, I encourage you to do so. There it is. Looks really nice. Let's pop it off. Here's our cute little supports. They should pop right off. And they do. And here it is. My very first mask on the CR10 SE. It's a little smaller than I had intended, but it came out really nice. It's especially impressive that this is the very first mask and the very first model I've ever sliced and printed on the CR10 SE, having done no manual calibrations from the box whatsoever. Perhaps it's time to push this thing a little harder with things that are a little bigger. Hey.